uh, be able to uh, find a common dialogue and find a common uh, consensus on um, governing it. There is the private sector that includes the uh, telecommunication operators and uh, corporations, software corporations. This is the basic because without a computer, without you know, a, a, and the, how shall I say, a good telecommunication infrastructure, there is no access. Capacity is going to come from vendors starting to su supply exactly what users need and to realize that there's a wide range of diversity in what, in what users need as well. It has to be internally generated and, and sustainable. There are some ways in which the market is good and the market is, is delivering to that. Things get, keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller with, with more and more portability, with longer and longer battery life. When people get a computer these days, they're going to get it in their, their cell phone. They're going to get it in, in some device. They're going to get it in, in a kiosk, perhaps. area where people need to focus on is in the cost of access. The cost of setting up a whole infrastructure, which is a lot of money, I can, I can, I can understand. They won't be able really to finance the digital gap of the um, African countries or developing countries, but at least they can, they can help in reducing the cost. I'm all for market forces and I do believe that, that eventually they often do resolve to the best solution, but there's no such thing as a free market. Markets are always regulated. Um, and I think there's a, a role for governments, of course, in that. That's what they do. They help to regulate markets. And I think they need to be absolutely tuned to what users need when they're making those decisions about where to step in and what to do. The second important uh, multi-stakeholder is uh, policy makers, governments institutions, I mean, official institutions that are responsible of setting up regulations and legislations for a fair use and for a regulated use of internet. The third multi-stakeholder are the organizations. I think civil society is a great place to start. Raising the awareness of the people, making sure that it's understandable to what extent internet access can participate in the development of a country. Many NGOs have a real specialization on certain aspects, so I think their input could be very, very important. Listen to civil society. They know what is going on. They know what they need. My biggest hope, to be honest with you, is that a lot more people, and I mean ordinary citizens globally, will be able to realize the potential of the internet. There are many other issues that should be addressed first before talking about internet access, mainly electricity, uh, health issues, uh, HIV for Africa. There are five billion people who are not connected to the internet. At some level, those five billion people, this is not the most important issue for them, right? But I believe that internet access will help a lot in order to bridge the gap, not only in, in, in internet, but bridge the development gap. What it could possibly enable as an open, open vehicle for communication and innovation and knowledge sharing is, is, is amazing. Internet is not the main issue. It's a vehicle, it's a media, it's a, it's a, it's a tool by which you can actually, I mean, open up and reach out and make for a better society. It does have the potential for so many things. Economic development, economic growth, poverty reduction, education. A huge potential as a force for human rights. Uh, freedom of expression. Sharing information, uh, being able to get news out of uh, countries which are uh, typically quite closed. The opportunity that the internet provides for people to share ideas and share information and to educate themselves and to learn from one another and to be creative. Some people say information is power. I say information sharing is power. Access to knowledge, access to uh, new information, to skills, forms of health care. It would enable competition and choice and innovation. But fundamentally, when you have this powerful technology and people get their hands on it, uh, good things will happen. 
and, and there's only, for many countries, there's nowhere to go but up. And that's what I think is so exciting about the internet, is, is, is all of the promises and all of the, the benefits that it's going to bring to people. That's not to say that there aren't challenges and there aren't obstacles, but this is a very exciting time in humanity. The benefits of this uh, far outweigh the problems and that we can, we can handle the problems. This internet is impacting the whole world. It is our, the developing countries, the whole world's, I think, responsibility to understand how it affects them. Because unless you make them aware of how it benefits them, then no one's going, you're not going to get people on board. I hope for the internet to be the empowering tool for, for the people that didn't have a voice in the past, for people who were, uh, who were disadvantaged. If you've got an internet connection, if you've got a website, if you've got email, you can, you can talk to just about anyone in the world. The internet is, has this vast amount of potential. And this is really revolutionary. Thank you.